Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Monica. I am an ex hanba I did Mary Kay and Beachbody several years ago, and because of my experiences, I have become extremely anti-MLM. In today's video, I wanted to kind of answer one of your questions. I got a comment on a video from, I think it was last week, and it was basically someone asking how do they get a family member out of an MLM because they noticed how cult-like it is, allegedly. Um, so just disclaimer, um, this video is for entertainment purposes only and these are all of my opinions. So I actually did film this video yesterday, but it was kind of more of a rant and I really wanted to structure it a little bit because I wanted to kind of make this into a manual. Um, because there really is not that much information out there about how to get your family member or friend out of the cult-like mentality of an MLM. All right, let's get into it. Number one, don't attack them. It is human nature for us to get extremely defensive if someone is against us, if someone has a different opinion from us, especially if they do it in an attacking manner. I said this in another video, it wasn't an anti-MLM video, it was a, about a completely different topic and someone had actually attacked me in the comments and me being the person that I am, you guys know my personality if you've been watching my videos, but me being the person that I am, I didn't want to hear their opinion. I know that that's immature on my part, but I am all for hearing both sides of an argument or even three sides, four sides, five sides, whatever. But you have to approach it a certain way. Because if you're just going to yell at people, look at what's going on politically right now. So many people are not handling both sides properly and they're just, because they're from extreme different opposing sides. So, you know, they, they don't know how to handle talking to each other. Politics have been known to break up friendships and break up families. I've seen it happen firsthand. So that's why you kind of have to approach it. You kind of have to approach it like a political argument. Approach it more of in a sensitive manner. Approach it more open-minded and you have to be able to listen to the person you're talking to as well. Don't just talk and expect them to listen and not let them speak their opinion as well. So that's one of the things that, you know, always, always approach it a specific way. Don't attack them, which actually brings me to point number two, which is don't call it a pyramid scheme. I know that a lot of us, myself included, we compare MLMs, certain MLMs and even the MLM structure, just a tad, to pyramid schemes, allegedly. Um, the reason why we do this is because a lot of uplines are very ill-informed and they don't know the difference between a pyramid scheme and an MLM. They know just the common I guess, difference between the two. A pyramid scheme is, yes, mostly recruiting. However, in order for an MLM to be considered a legal multi-level marketing company, they have to follow the 70-30 rule, which means 70% of their money has to come from the product that they sell or services, whatever they're doing. 30% comes from their recruits. If you look at income disclosure statements, I will talk about this a little bit later in the video. But you can tell that a lot of MLMs, especially the oversaturated ones, are walking a very fine line of that 70-30 rule. If 90% and above of people in the company are not making money, that is a telltale sign that if this person's getting in right now, most likely they're not going to make money. Number three. Um, that actually just reminded me of the owl from the Tootsie Pop commercial. Do you remember that Tootsie Pop commercial? The one, two, three. And, uh, okay, yeah, sorry. Ramble. Ramble! Oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> Number three. Do your research ahead of time about the company. I know that this is a lot of work for someone to do, and I know that you really don't want to do it because you have your opinion on the company, you think that it's a cult. I get it. I totally get it. But... If you present them with facts, if you show them, even if you just find articles about people that were ex hanbots if you do research on the company, it will show them that you did your due diligence and you might even find more information about the company that they don't know about, which is good because if they don't know certain things, 
you're just showing them that that you're not just speaking from opinion you're speaking from doing research from finding articles from doing that sort of thing certain MLMs have charities and organizations um, that are being considered scams if you have been following beauty with Ashley here on YouTube then you know exactly what I'm talking about um, but if you don't know I'll leave her link below she is in the middle of some drama and I am on her side I'm just gonna say I'm on her side <laughs> but the way that everything unfolded it just like snowballed okay anyway do your research and the reason why I say do your research as well is because a lot of these humbots if you watch my MLM fail video a few weeks ago I talked about a Monet Hun who actually said in her video do your research don't be ignorant same goes for people who are on the outside, who are opposed to MLMs. Do your research. That's really all that it takes. And if you do your research, you can shut some of these people up. I'm going to tell you right now. Number four, show them income disclosure statements and compensation plans. This is important, and this is why you know I said I would get into this in, later in the video. Um, so this is important because if you take a look at income disclosure statements, some companies don't have them. My Monet video, I did talk about how I couldn't find the income disclosure statement for them, which I find kind of shady and sketchy because what are you guys hiding, okay? But if they have an income disclosure statement, which some do, most do actually, most of the ones I've looked up, they do, you'll see that the people at the bottom, 90% and above, are not making money. And also make sure to tell them that this income disclosure statement does not factor in the starter kit and it also does not factor in the personal volume or PV that they have to keep a month in order to be considered active or in order to have the same rank. Number five, have them keep a spreadsheet. If you don't have Microsoft Office on your laptop, which I actually don't because I didn't feel like paying for it, um, if you don't have it, then just go on Google Docs. They have an Excel spreadsheet file in there. Make sure that you show them how much they're spending a month and how much they're actually getting back from sales. Now, I say to do this and also make sure to tell them to add all of the stuff that they're spending out of pocket. So, for example, for Mary Kay, they said that for the Mary Kay parties that we would be doing, with social media right now and how big it is, I'm kind of aging myself a little bit, but with social media and how big it is right now, a lot of people are doing Facebook parties, but some people are still doing the in-person physical interaction parties as well. But they tell you that you have to spend money on things that will make it look pretty, things that will make it appealing. Some people even spend money on having like wine, cheese, and crackers, you know, if they're bringing refreshments or something like that. Tell them to put down how much gas they're spending that's business business related. Um, tell them to write down how many hours they're working a day. They will never get that time back. You can get money back. You can work your way out of debt. You can. Um, it is extremely hard. I'm going to say it is extremely hard. It took me years to get out of my credit card debt, and I'm still paying off student loans in my car and everything like that. But it is extremely hard, but with hard work and busting your ass, you can do it. But the time that you spend in these MLMs, you will never get back. I was spending way too much time. My fiance and I spent like no time together. If we went out to dinner, I was literally on my phone the entire time checking in with, with my challenge groups. I was checking in with my uplines. I was checking in with the training groups, blah, 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 blah. So there was that. And... When I actually took and calculated all of the time that I spent, I literally was making basically close to negative $50 an hour. Um, I was spending so much time. I have a medical condition. Um, I have epilepsy. And if I'm sleep deprived, that's actually a trigger for my epilepsy. And thankfully nothing happened. But I was basically going to bed at like midnight sometimes checking in with the groups and everything like that, listening to the calls after they were already recorded, and, well, some of them, not all of them, because I, it was literally the same bullshit being spewed every single time. And then having to wake up at five something in the morning in order to get ready for my full-time job. 
Which, another thing too, is they try to do this whole financial freedom bullshit, but all of the people that were in my upline all still had a full-time job. They were not doing Beachbody. I, I'm talking about Beachbody. They were not doing Beachbody full-time. So, there's that. Number six, the sisterhood is bullshit. Okay, so this next thing I'm going to tell you guys is kind of personal. I'm an introvert. I'm an extremely socially awkward. I may not seem like it on camera, but I am. And it takes a lot for me to actually trust someone and open up to someone. I think that's part of being from Jersey and part of all of the things that have happened to me in my life. But being promised a sisterhood and women empowering women, they're basically using the feminist movement to their advantage right now um, about women empowering women and all of that kind of stuff which really irks me because don't use that to your advantage because what you're talking about is bullshit your sisterhood is bullshit and they try to make it seem like you're friends you're only friends because you're making them money let's be real here the only I only knew in Beachbody I only knew two of the girls that were in my upline um, and that's only because we went to high school together so and we were never friends in high school um, we knew of each other we I had I think study hall with the one girl but I never had that girlfriend basically I never had that female interaction where I truly felt where I truly felt like I was actually part of something and I know that that's probably partially my own fault because I am so 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 socially awkward. But to be promised this, um, you know, it was just something that I always wanted. And now that I'm older, I do have an extremely small group of people that are in my life. I have, you know, one girl that is part of my life. Shout out to my friend Ellen. Um, we met through blogging. I have my fiance and I have my mom who are literally my best friends and the rest of the family is also very close to me but those are the people that I literally talk to on like a daily basis. So and they are the people that I will go to first with problems that I have. So <clears throat> the sisterhood that they talk about is bullshit because as soon as you leave that's gone. I don't talk to anyone that I was in Mary Kay with. I don't talk to anyone that I was in Beachbody with. And there's a story that I want to go into further when I actually do a video about this particular MLM. But there's a girl who I know and she actually told me about how when she left the MLM, not only were they talking shit about her behind her back, but as soon as she went public and talked about all of the shady shit that they were doing, um, they actually went after her family. So and they were talking to her family saying all spreading all of these lies about her that weren't true and that just goes to show you that this whole sisterhood that they put on it's not a real sisterhood so that brings me to number seven which is sometimes if you love something you just have to let it go sometimes they do need to learn from their mistakes they do need to lose money and unfortunately that's just how it works i think that in my case it was good that i did lose money. I know that that sounds kind of terrible, but I think that it was good because I realized how predatory these MLMs are and I realized just how much money you waste. And I wish that I knew about the anti-MLM movement way before. And the thing is, is that you can't support them with their business venture. You have to let them realize how hard it is to get random people off of Facebook or friends to sign up for their group. But sometimes, you know, don't don't support their business because if you do, they'll just see that I got them and this is easy. Like if I can get my family to sign up, that means that they're part of my group. They're part of my customer base. They can be part of my team. But I highly recommend not showing them the subreddit for anti-MLM because probably won't go over well. They'll think that you're a hater. They'll think that those people are haters. And they'll probably even think that, you know, me making my own videos is because I failed. I didn't fail. The MLM structure failed me. MLMs fail you. And that's the message that I'm trying to get across is that they will tell you that you're not working hard enough, but you are. I know damn well that you're working hard enough. You're not making it because the market's oversaturated and the MLM structure is not built to have people make it. Um, so if you've watched up to here, let's just recap all of the things I talked about. One, 
don't attack them. Two, don't call it a pyramid scheme. Three, do your research about the company. Four, show them the numbers, aka income disclosure statements and compensation plans. Five, have them keep a spreadsheet. Six, t the sisterhood is bullshit. Seven, sometimes if you love something, you have to let it go. So that is basically what I wanted to talk about. If any of you have anything that you want to add, I'm probably going to add some stuff in the comments because I'm sure that I forgot a bunch of stuff that you could also use. But I hope that you found this video educational or, you know, entertainment, entertaining, whatever. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you have watched up to here, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, dislike, whatever, you, whatever tickles your pickle. Um, but yeah, so this is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye.